haven't even been sitting for 15 minutes. I just pinwheeled a flipping black bear. Welcome back folks to Dropping Them TV, episode number two for 2013-2014 hunting season. On this episode here, you're gonna see some turkey hunts of me and my wife. Uh, we had a great day and the rare, and only this guy can do, is the archery bear. It's unbelievable. It was definitely a fun experience. I hope you guys enjoy. Well, my wife was telling me that She's been seeing these turkeys about every day. And now that turkey season's in, we decided that the following day we would take the gun out and see if we can't get a turkey before the rut kicks in. So that was our plan for the that morning. And sure enough, it worked out. And as you'll see, it was a pretty interesting day for us. had a flock come out of the pines here in front of us this morning and we were lucky enough we pulled a double I shot shot one and got right back onto the call and handed the gun to Andrew and they come right back and she got hers so let's go gather them up. Double. Well, as you can see, uh, me and the wife made out real well. The turkeys were where they always were. And just like she said, they were coming out of roost just below her. and We took advantage of that. So now you guys seen that and hopefully you enjoyed it. Let's talk about John's bear kill. Unbelievable. It can only happen to you. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, folks, I've been hunting bear now for probably four years. And to be honest with you, my luck hasn't been the greatest. I've had a couple encounters. One where I unfortunately uh, didn't retrieve the animal. It uh, wasn't enough shots in it, I guess, to put it down. But uh, I was able to get out this year and lo and behold, walking down along the river, found a great cornfield, lots of bear sign. There's bear scat everywhere. And to me, that's pretty much all I need to sit down and have a little watch for a little bit, see what I see. I played the wind right the whole hunt. I didn't want to have the animal smell me because their nose is 
pretty incredible. That's one of their greatest senses. Their vision isn't the best, but their nose will get you every time, just like with any other animal. Now, I get out and I find this cornfield and I get to a corner to create what you would call a pinch point with the brush, the river, and the cornfield. I get in, I sit down, and I don't even sit for but maybe two minutes at the first spot I was at. I didn't like it. I moved 10 yards over to my left, sat down, started clearing down some corn lanes, or some corn stalks to make a shooting lane to my left. I looked up and I couldn't believe it. Out of the brush already comes a bear. Not just any bear, but a mature black bear, something I would definitely be interested in harvesting. He comes in and to boot, he's playing with a barrel. This isn't just any old barrel, this is a barrel down along the river. One of his favorites, by the way, it looks in the video. He was having a ball down there. He was chewing on the styrofoam float sides. He was flipping it up, dragging it around. He stood it up at one point, and for whatever reason, the bear stands up playing with the barrel. He just bolts, takes off into the corn. Now, I can hear this bear thrashing up through the corn, coming right at me. Well, not much left to do, but get ready and make sure the camera's on. So I'm sitting there and I decide, you know what, it's time to get stuff ready. I get my ranges out, boom, I'm tapping, getting range real quick, set my yard, my uh, pin to 30 yards. I stand up. Yeah, let's talk about this 30 yards. How did this work out? Let's talk about that. Well, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of, uh, I call it bear fever. You might have heard of buck fever, cabin fever. I don't know if there's rabbit fever or there's squirrel all kinds fever. Of fever. But... Let's hear about what happened to this. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there's not really much to explain other than the fact that I may or may not have missed. I missed. Luminoc has it's proven on, it's on, it's that on I footage. missed. You missed. You missed. But I am a. I guess you can call it lucky. Lucky, yes. Lucky's the, the word. <laughs> oh, oh. to be an American today. You are an incredible man. Oh my god, the shot looked good. Second one did. Luminox stuck right in him. Alright, I gotta give him plenty of time. Whew, we're gonna go back, review the footage. Folks, I think I got a bear to get. Been sitting for 15 minutes. <sighs> Folks, I don't even know what to say right now. McGill's Great Outdoor Adventure. Dropping a TV. First day, Bear Archer. And that just freaking happened. I just pinwheeled a flipping black bear. Well, folks, we're heading back to the truck. We're gonna get re-geared up. I gotta go get some help. I'm not going in. I stand in corn alone. 
Yeah, I might. I'm about to think of a sissy yet. But it's definitely too early to be going in and rooting around. So we're just gonna keep walking out of here down this cornfield. Get the hell out of here for now. Go back and get some assistance. Kills great outdoor adventures, dropping them TV. And the good old boys. Brought to you in part by Raid Extreme. Cutting that bear out, baby. We're gonna get that bear. You wait. My center punched it. That's a good sign right there, folks. We're in here in the thickens trying to get this done. There we go. We're tracking right now. We're in the corn. Oh, yeah, he stepped him. Damn, buddy. Oh, my God. Beautiful shot. Look at that rage. Rage damage. extreme, baby. Look at the damage by the rage. Holy. This is exactly how we found them. And this is how we're going to do it right here, folks. Well, I've said this many a times before, but I've never been in the great state of Pennsylvania in the middle of a cornfield holding my first ever black bear, and I was able to take it with a Matthew switchback. I don't even know what to say right now. This is unbelievable. Wow. What is it on? <laughs> oh, that would hurt. Well, folks, I, like I said, I'm kind of speechless right now. I really don't even know what to say. I'm out here with my good buddy, Timmy. He helped me track because of my color blindness, and we followed him probably. 200 yards plus. 200 plus yards. <laughs> Shot looked great on camera. Wow. I just, I'm dude, tickled to death. Dude. Flip him open. I'm pretty sure he has a white patch. Look, he has a V on his chest. Yeah! Yes, he's got the white patch. I'm not a bear hunter, so I don't know what that is. I guess that's I'm a bear awesome. Now. Flip it open again, so I can get a better video there. That's that's a lot of guys in PA look for right there. That white patch on the wow. front of that bear. That's a beautiful V. Look at the what do we got? We got boar or sow there. That looks like a big old boar. Look at this. Wow, man. I'm holding the hands of a giant. We even though you missed, I'd have to say, your adrenaline had to have been pumping. Pump but you kept it mistake. together to make the second shot, which Mr. Lucky would only have a second Double shot lung. at a bear with a bow. Well, and it come together. I, like I said, I was just sitting there and after he took off running, I was pretty calm. I stayed calm as much as I could. Um, he didn't really have too many options with the river being down to his side. So I had some high expectations he would come back. I was still standing and had arrow knocked, everything was ready, and the bear comes bolting back out of the brush. I was able to throw him, I don't know if that's technically a bear call, but I've heard bears make noise that sounds similar to this, and I figured, hey, I only got one shot, so might as well make it count. So gave him a couple grunts at him and... Do them grunts again. Ooh, ooh. I don't know, something like that, but you can hear it in the video. But he stops, I think it was like 32 yards, able to make a double long shot. Luminot lit up through the video. Rage in the cage, did the damage. I mean, bear's a hard animal to put down and the combination of that was lethal. Just so there's no questions as to what is in that barrel. We've come back to the scene of the crime, CSI. This is where it all went down, folks. I just want to go up here and uh, show you what's inside that barrel. Because there's going to be some miscommunication there between some people and watching that video, I can tell you that much right now. You had bait in that barrel. I don't think so, Jack. It's kind of hard to bait. When you got a flipping stand in cornfield. Okay, I know the barrel for you has been a question. I know you called me right after the kill. You were concerned about it. And I told you, if, if it's not bait, there's nothing to worry about. And you went above and beyond and you called the game commission. So, I mean, as you can see in the barrel, it is what it is. Like you're not minnow bucket, a minnow bucket and a garden hose, folks. There is no, no bait, no residue, nothing of the sort on that barrel. Like Jason said earlier, I contacted the game commission and I even made offers to take them out and show them the barrel, show them the area. 
Um, try to go above and beyond just for the satisfaction for the viewers at home, dropping them TV, representing ethical fair hunting. Exactly look like bait to me folks. Looks like a garden hose and a minnow bucket. A rope. An empty empty minnow bucket. <laughs> that shit string. Broken off. Somebody must have used it down along the river. You can see right here where he was just chewing away on these styrofoam things. Pretty neat right there, Jack. But just wanted to make sure that there was no miscommunication about what was in that barrel. Well, folks, I just wanted to show you that and clear up any misconceptions that we have. So stay tuned, keep watching, and hope you enjoyed that video because I know I did. I enjoyed making it, to tell you that much. Man, I gotta quit missing. See you next time.